So, uh, which is the strongest argument to do sustainable investments? Well, I think ultimately for investors, the answer is that it's profitable. It's what their shareholders or intended beneficiaries actually want. Uh, it's what, as investors, they're capable of doing. But as a society, I think the story is bigger, that without sustainable investments, we won't have an economy that can sustain citizens' prosperity in the long run. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your most important recommendation for action to business in general? I think businesses that want to stay in business throughout the transition to a low carbon, climate resilient, more inclusive economy will have to learn to use natural resources in very different ways and treat people in very different ways. In, in what ways? Well, yeah, today's coal companies are on the verge of bankruptcy. And today's energy utilities that have been fossil fuel focused are in deep trouble around the world. That we see that the new business models that will be successful will be ones that pick up on clean technology, uh, that are uh, more accommodating of their knowledge partners or people they employ on a temporary or full-time basis, uh, that uh, no longer deal with communities as if they're disposable mm. uh, and who see the future in a clearer way than simply looking into the past. Mm. You mentioned that steps have been taken uh, in several of the countries you studied. What steps? Well, I think my focus on changes in the financial system have highlighted perhaps what we didn't expect, which is the role of central banks and financial regulators, stock exchanges, credit rating agencies, accounting bodies, mm. in beginning to bring social and environmental issues into the fabric of the way financial and capital markets work. So the rules that govern the way financial decisions are made. Uh, and I think we see that whether it be through fiscal measures, tax advantage, uh, through regulations and policy, uh, and through a range of measures of those specific actors who are in effect, the governors of our financial system. Mm -hmm. You say that developing and emerging countries are leading the quiet revolution. Uh, why is that? It's strange, the idea that Bangladesh might be more interesting mm -hmm. than Wall Street. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet, in many ways, it's true. I think it's partly because the social and environmental challenges are far more apparent in those countries. When you're sitting in Wall Street or maybe even in Stockholm, you know intellectually about the challenges, but they're not hitting you every day in the face or poisoning your children on the way to school. Mm. Uh, I, I think secondly, perhaps there is less of an ideology about the financial sector being efficient mm. and therefore being effective and being left alone, which I think is an ideology that has built up uh, in OECD countries over recent years. In emerging and developing countries, I think the financial system is understood as having a purpose, and that purpose is development, of investing in a real economy that will drive the success of that country and the prosperity and well-being of its citizens. And I think that broader understanding of why finance exists uh, is increasingly absent uh, in developed economies. That said, I think it's important to highlight that uh, there are leading cases in developed countries as well. Sweden has done a lot and is increasingly doing more. We see developments in France, in the UK and elsewhere. So yes, developing and emerging markets, perhaps some of the most interesting examples, but some developed countries also making important moves. Okay, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Okay.